Hello again, and welcome. In the last video, I said I wasn't sure what I was going to talk about. And then this morning, my friend Rick Crawford called me up all excited about some potential discovery he had made regarding the Peralta, the Peralta stones. Um, I've written about the Peralta stones because, I don't know, someone sent the photos to me many years ago, I don't know when, and uh, I read through the story as it was presented, and as you know, everybody places the target of the Peralta stones up in the Superstition Mountains. But I noticed something right off the bat. Assuming the Peralta stones are authentic, which I believe they are, <coughs> one thing that didn't make sense to me is why would you find the Peralta stones discarded at the beginning of the trail? Taking a closer look at the Peralta stones, you can see what in my mind is clearly two primary rivers. The traditional story would have you believe that the upper river is the Salt Creek and that the lower river is Queens Creek, Salt River and Queens Creek. <coughs> and I decided to pull up the 30-minute maps. Uh, back in the day, it wasn't Google Earth. It was some other program, which I cannot remember the name of. And I compared the rivers. And what I could see, plain as day, is that the upper river is not Salt Creek at all. Salt Creek is a windy, twisting, river up and down over and under <laughs> there's there's no way that that upper river is queen's creek or i mean salt creek salt river um if you take google earth today and you highlight the rivers in that area where the peralta claims were in part um, you can see that the upper river is Queens Creek and the lower river is the Gila. This changes the entire location. At this point, I couldn't help but imagine all the people who have spent weeks, months, if not years, in the Superstition Mountains looking for something that isn't there. Doesn't it make more sense that you would find the Peralta stones, which were found right by Apache Junction, supposedly, but doesn't it make more sense that they would be found at the end of the trail where you no longer needed them? And this is assuming that that's what happened, is that they were done with them, they discarded them. Well. Looking at this new information changes the entire location of where the center of the heart would be on the map. And uh, with this information, I decided to do an overlay on a tracing myself, which I did. And that point in the middle of the heart lands smack dab on the Raymer Mines. Now, what are the Raymer Mines? The Raymer Mines was one of the largest or larger silver deposits discovered in Arizona by a man named James De Noon Raymert. <laughs> now, most probably wouldn't uh, investigate this any further than that. But I decided to look into 
the history of James de Noon Raymer. Turns out he's a Nordic man. His mother, her name, believe it or not, was Jeanette Sinclair. Interesting last name. And he ended up migrating to the United States. I'm not sure what year. <clears throat> uh, I think it was somewhere around 1840-something. And he had the education of a lawyer, politician, and a few other things, but nothing to do with mining whatsoever. And at one given point, because of health reasons, he, he uh, went to Chile at a place called Bio Bio River in Mulchen, Chile. Again, most would never think to research that a little closer. But those of you that did a little research and followed up on the Peralta family land grant trials, wherein the United States government basically screwed all the Mexican people and the Spanish people out of their land grants, uh, the Peralta family was living in Bio Bio River, Mulchen, Chile. And they've been there since before 1750. Even today, if you go look up names in this area, in this exact same place, the Peralta family is still a prominent name. <coughs> well, James de Noon Raymer spent three years down there. And when he come back, he landed in San Francisco, uh, got a message or something from somebody. I can't remember what it had to do with, and he was off to Pima County, Arizona, where he miraculously discovers one of the largest silver deposits in Mexico, or in uh, Arizona. Now, I find this to be a little coincidental. A man who knew nothing of mining, man I wish I had that kind of luck. It seems to me that James de Noon Raymert got to know the Peralta family while he was down there. And it would seem that the Peralta family shared certain information with him. And I'll bet, if you could dig deep enough, that uh, a certain stipend of the proceeds that he got from the Raymart mines probably found their way down to Chile. Now, if you want to read up on this a little bit more, with a little more detail, uh, Go to Toscoro.com and look up the article, The Peralta Stones. Um, I'm not sure what more I can tell you about this. I had uh, planned on inserting images into this video, but I know that most people don't have the time to sit and watch long, dragged out videos. <laughs> and besides, all the photographs, the pictures that would fit along with this are going to be right there in the article. Um, I believe I've covered it all. The research done on this doesn't necessarily make me right, but it does put me in a position where I have no other choice but to say, if I'm wrong, prove me wrong. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and share. And we'll see what I come up with next time. Thank you.